Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Welcome to the continuation of our course, Environmental Impact Assessment, Auditing and Environmental Law. Today, we'll continue with our lecture titled EIF Process in Nigeria. In the past few weeks, we have been talking about the EIA Environmental Impact Assessment, the definition, the objective, and the basis why we need to have EIA. Last week, we were able to look at different projects that are subjected to EIA. We have the mandatory list of projects that before you carry out those projects, you have to do an EIA. Today, we look at the process of EIA in Nigeria, especially to to the to the law environmental impact assessment eia act cap e12 law of federal republic of nigeria that is what we will be looking at today so What are the objectives of today's course? At the end of today, we'll be able to describe the EIA process. We'll list the principle and procedure of EIA legislation, explain the shortcomings of EIA in Nigeria, explain the shortcoming of EIA process in, in Nigeria. and also define the law and look at how the, the process is, is all about. That is, what we, that is what we are going to look at today. So the EIA process describes the various stages of EIA. The EIA process describes the various stages of EIA. It described the various process of EIA that we're supposed to, to have. And this include the consideration of alternative, the screening of the projects, the scoping, the baseline study, the prediction of impacts, mitigation measures, public consultation and submission of the draft EIA report. The submission of the draft EIA report. So let's look at the various steps we need to go through before we can achieve the, our EIA. The various steps we need to go through before we can achieve our EIA. The first steps in the process is consideration of alternatives. When you design a project, the first thing you look out for is consider what are the alternatives to that project? What are the things like, should this project occur? If this project are to go on, what are other alternatives? What are other things we will look out for? The second stage is the screening. You screen the project, whether the project is due for EIA or the project is not due for EIA. That is this next thing. Followed by scoping. The scoping workshop or the scoping exercise is the process whereby you look at the various environmental aspects of the project. That is what we call scoping. The various environmental aspects of the project is what we call the scoping exercise. After the scoping exercise, you now carry out the baseline study. The baseline study is actually when you go on the field to do various environmental analysis. You test the water, you test the land, you test, you take soil sample, you take air sample, you do socioeconomic studies. That is 
what we call baseline data gathering. After the baseline, you now use the baseline to predict the likely impact the project will have on the immediate environment. So when you predict the likely impact and you look at everything, that is the next stage. After the prediction method, you now put in the mitigation measures. You now put in the mitigation measures. The mitigation measures are the steps taken to mitigate any of the predicting impact. Now, that is the next stage. Also, there's what you call public consultation. You need to consult with the public. There's nothing better than local knowledge. Local knowledge is the most important thing when you come to environmental protection. How you, 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 how you want to do something, you get information from the people living within this vicinity of the project. All these together, you compile them and you now do what you call a draft EIA report. So when you do the draft EIA report, the, DA, the draft EIA report is now submitted to uh, the, the, the competent authority, which is the government agency that will look into it then before an approval is, is, is sought for. So I, 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 I'll go back again in details. The first stage is the consideration of the alternative. EIA should start early by providing an environmental input in, on the decision whether to be constructed, where the project is going to be located, so that to avoid necessary environmental impacts that will come to it. Also, environmental sensitive location and selective design and the process is also part of the consideration at the beginning of, of the EIA. Then the next thing is that you screen the project. You screen the project. Screening refers to the decision of whether an EIA is required or not. And if an EIA is required, the screening helps you to categorize the project into category, whether it is category A or category one, category two or category three. Category one projects are projects that require EIA. They are mandatory. You must carry out EIA for it. You must carry out EIA for it. There's nothing somebody telling us. You want to do a refinery, you want to do an airport, you want to do a mega project, it is EIA mandatory. The next set is category two project. The category two project, the screening exercise will help you to determine whether you actually need an EIA. So for the category two project, you do the screening, and when you do the screening, you will determine whether should we do an EIA or should the project just come up with an environmental management plan. The last category are category three project. Category three project does not require an EIA. Imagine somebody said he wants to do a small farm, a small chicken farm at the back of his house. I now ask the person to do an EIA. It's like wasting the time and money. So category three projects are projects that does not require an EIA. So this is followed by the scoping exercise. This is followed by the scoping exercise. The purpose of scoping is to identify projects that are likely to have significant environmental impact. The identification key effect is usually undertaken using combination of professional judgment. You call different people together. You call government regulatory agency, you call NGO, you call people around, and they carry out a scoping exercise. The scoping exercise will enable you to know whether what are the likely impact the project will, will have. After the scoping exercise, you do what you call a baseline study. You do what they call a baseline study. A baseline study is required for project proposal where there are strong evidence that the proposed development will impact on the environment negatively. So the study will establish the inventory. That's what we call the baseline. Before this project commence, so before this project starts, what is the initial environmental setting? What is the ground noise level? Are there ecological survey? Are there cultural sites within the environment? What are the plants? What are the animals within that environment that are likely to go into a situation or that are likely to affect? What are the ex-status of the people living in that environment? 
What is the economic status of the people living in the environment? What are things within that environment? That is what the environmental baseline data is. The, the baseline data is important as it may bring out project modification and also helps you to determine whether that project you give will get approval or not. So immediately you have the baseline. The next thing you will do is do what? Assess the impact of the project on the baseline that you have or the environment. So the, the assessment of the impact is one of the main purpose of EIA because the environmental effects of a developmental proposal are predicted. The first element is assessing the impact to understand the baseline condition. And then you now use different methods to do what? To assess the impact of the project on the environment. The baseline condition will normally be established by consulting existing publication, carrying out survey, doing tests, and doing ground treating to find out what really happened. And most of the things that will be done by baseline are things that will have been discussed during the scoping exercise. The second element in assessing impact is to predict the magnitude of the impact. How would the impact affect the environment? Is it going to be large? Is it going to be small? How big will it be? That is also one of the ways the impact is. Where possible, the changes should be expressed in qualitative terms. You can use models. You can use models. You can predict how it will affect. In some cases, too, the techniques used to may rely on professional judgment and consultation. You call expert team to come and help you to predict what are the likely impacts these things will have on us. The third element in assessing impacts is to assess the significance of the impact. How significant are the impacts? Are they moderate? moderate? Are they high? Are they low? Are they minor? Or are they major significant impact? So the quantification of the impact will help us to know the kind of mitigation measure you will put in place. So if there are minor impact, if there are minor impact, okay, there are minor, we don't have to put more stress on it. We don't have to do something serious. But if they are also moderate, you can do, you can decide that, okay, these are moderate impact and this impact will cause problems. So what do you do? You put in, in place things. So if there are major impact, you don't overlook them. You will not overlook major impact. You will not overlook it. You will put serious attention into it and you will do your rescue. So after that, the next thing you do, you mitigate. All the impact that you have, uh, you, you have predicted, whether minor, whether major, you will find a mitigation measure. Mitigation means the environmental effort should follow a systematic process to comply with standard. If the noise level of the factory is higher than the, the, the environment because the place is a residential area, and the noise level is high. So what will you do? You give them recommendation that will help them to reduce the noise. That is what you call a mitigation measure. After mitigation measure, there's what you call public consultation. Consultation of the stakeholder is very, very important in the EIA process. The view of the citizen, the view of the people are so key to a project. So when people are consulted, their life, their life, their health, the socioeconomics are things that we we'll look into. And you will let them know and talk about their mind, how the project will affect them. I'll give you an example. You are setting up a factory that will have a lot of trailers coming into a community. And that is the only road the community has. And that is the road the children use to go to school within the community. So the trailer is going to have serious impact on the children. So you need to consult with them. 
whether you are going to do an alternative way where the children will pass or where the community will pass so that the trailer will not affect the social economy activity of the community. That is one of the key things about what social uh, public consultation. After public consultation, you now do the report, put the document into a report and submit it. Sometimes when, when the report is part of the project that are under category one, the reports are normally on public display for 21 days so that people can come and make comments about it. So for, for Nigeria, for Nigeria, these are the steps you take. So for projects that are bigger, you complete an EIA notification form after paying 10,000 Naira to Federal Ministry of Environment. After paying 10,000, you, you com complete a form and you do what to call, in the, the ministry will carry out what to call initial environmental examination or they will carry out what to call preliminary assessment. There will be a preliminary assessment. That is where consideration of all relevant information of the project and the project will be categorized, whether it is category one, category two, or category three. The project screening report is now forwarded to the proponent. That will make the proponent to submit to call terms of reference. In the terms of reference that the, 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 you submit through your consultant, it will describe the project, it will describe the purpose of the project, the objective, the rationale, and the benefit of the project to the immediate community or to you know, discuss the scope of the project, how large or how big the project is. And you now give a simple description about the project environment. How is the climate of the environment? How is the quality of the air, the soil, the ecology, the waste inventory, the socioeconomic economic assessment? These are things you put in the terms of reference. After this, you submit the terms of reference for, for vetting. But before you submit it, a site verification exercise will have been carried out. The government official will come to the site to come and verify whether that project has commenced or the project has not commenced. After the terms of reference has been carried out, then uh, a site verification has been carried out, a scoping workshop will, will be done. After the scoping workshop is done, you go for baseline data. After going for baseline data, you submit the report and then there will be a review. In Nigeria, there are three types of review. There is in-house review, there is technical review, and there is public review. There is in-house review, there is technical review, and there is public review. So the public review, which are normally the panel review, will allow public to come and what and make comments about it. After the review, the revision of the report is submitted and an EIA statement is, is issued. An environmental impact statement is issued along with the certificate, the project having EIA certificate. So after that, the project will commence. After the project commence and you start running the project, government official will come constantly to do what you call impact mitigation monitoring exercise, IMME, impact mitigation monitoring exercise. So the impact mitigation monitoring exercise are to check that there are likely some projects there's likely some impact that may not have been predicted at the early stage of the project and what happened, it comes up. So during the impact mitigation monitoring exercise, this helps you to look into it. So let's look at the chart. Let's look at this chart. This chart gives a flow diagram of how uh, the, the process of EIA in, in Nigeria. The proponent submit a flexibility report or a project proposal to the Federal Ministry of Environment Office. 
after that an initial environmental evaluation is, is done, after in, in initial environmental uh, is done, you categorize the project, whether it is mandatory project or category one, category two, category three, then there'll be a screening. After the screening, you submit the TOR. After this TOR, if there are no, if EIA is, is not required, then it goes for approval. But if an EIA is required, you go through all the steps taken, you submit a draft report. So when you submit a draft report, you see that the project either go through technical review, panel review, or public review. So that is the basic steps for EIA process in what? In Nigeria. So environmental impact assessment is an important tool that should be used parallel to development. There are categories of projects that require EIA to be carried out, and these are referred to as mandatory projects. Let's do a recap of what we have studied today. Today, we discuss about what to call EIA process in Nigeria. The process by which an, a, a proponent or a consultant must go through before you do what to call get an EIA approval. So the process includes consideration of the alternative, screening exercise, scoping, baseline, da baseline data gathering, prediction of the likely significant impacts. After predicting, you propose mitigation measure. You do public consultation, submission of EIA reports. After submission of the EIA report, there will be a review. After the review, there will be monitoring and what? Auditing. So, and I was able to explain what is consideration of the alternative is all about. The screening process whereby project will be categorized, whether as category one, category two, or category three. Then there could be scoping exercise. Then there will be baseline data gathering. There will be assessment of the impact. Then there will be mitigation measure. There will be co public consultation because people are living within that environment. Their socioeconomic and health is, will be, may likely be affected by the project. So you need their input on the project. Then you go to the review and the decision making. And I said the review for EIA report in Nigeria is normally categorized into uh, three categories. There could be in-house review, there will be technical review, and there could be public review. And thereafter, I, I take you through the EIA process where the proponent will obtain a form after paying 10,000 10, and submit the EIA form. After that, there will be consideration for alternate, uh, there will be initial environmental examination or preliminary assessment. After that, you submit a terms of reference. And under, in the terms of reference, we want to see the following. Description of the proposed project, objective, rationale, and benefit of the project, the project scope, the description of the project environment, and this, uh, which will include the air quality, the soil, the inventory, the socioeconomic, and the health assessment. After that, you, the, the, the government official will come and do what we call a site inspection. They will carry out a site inspection and they, they will vet it. And after the site inspection, there will be a scoping exercise. So after the scoping exercise, then you, you, you go to, for the baseline study. From the baseline study, you submit the draft report. From the draft report, you, 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 you based on the category of the project, it can either go for public display or, or just uh, in-house review. So after that, there will be a review process. We can either be in-house, technical, or public. Then the, the, the project is given an approval. After giving an approval, some of the comments made in the report, you give the, the proponent or the consultant to, to go and input it. After six months, they submit the report, then you'll be given an e environmental time pass statement along with the EIA certificate. So when the project kickstarts, government officials will continue to come to do what you call environmental impact mitigation monitoring exercise. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for today's lecture. We'll continue next week.
there's no question. So we'll see you next week. Thank you.